Joe, how would one develop an idea first for the web series? I mean, does someone look at what to make versus a type of web series that a void that hasn't been filled already? Are you looking to fill a certain demographic in the right. industry? What's popular right now? Or they go off what inspires them? I would go more with the latter with inspiring because I I'm, not, I'm not a fan of making calling cards. I'm not a fan of, of writing from demographics. I don't, I don't think that you can think up a story and go, well, that's what a 24-year-old woman who wants to buy a Volvo would watch because that's shitty storytelling, I think. Um, write what you know is going to be fun to write and work your ass off on and that is going to take everything out of you because it's got to be it's got to be worth it's got to be fun it's got to be worth it and i think that if you're like i have a vampire show there are a lot of vampire shows part of the inspiration was to find another way into that genre and that was part of the thinking but i wrote a show that has profanity in it i wrote a show that is you know my vampire rules are no one sparkles there's no romance uh it's, a, I think, a different approach to it. But what I, I love bad guys, I love crime, that whole... I was a bartender in Boston and had mafia regulars, so I kind of felt like I knew a little bit about that world, and it just seemed like the perfect mix of things. So I think if you're, if you're thinking about making a show, imagine that there is no television industry, there is no film industry, the entertainment industry doesn't exist. Now, what story do you want to tell? Because the only thing the entertainment industry is going to bring you is people telling you no, people telling you what to do, people telling you what not to do, lots and lots and lots and lots of rules. And part of those rules are, who's your demographic? Who's going to watch this? If you are going around town trying to get permission, trying to get somebody to say yes, then go do that. If you see this as the first time in the history of storytelling that you can create something at a quality that has never been achievable for this price that you can show to an audience around the world on the internet as not the greatest thing in the world because so much of this has been about yeses and noes so much of this has been about please let me tell the story sure we're gonna fire you now and bring in our writer and our director and completely change everything you do. Or, well, we'd like this, this, and this because it'll be good for the sponsor. Or, oh, we don't want this because we can't get sponsorship. My thinking is find some way to do it with as little bullshit as you possibly can because the more bullshit you have to deal with, the more it slows you down, the more you're waiting for somebody else to give you permission. It's, to me, it's like this is the perfect opportunity to be able to tell a story. So I think. If you can come up with a story that you can get the cash, find the cash, find some way around it, incorporate the budget into the idea of the story, make it, make it a consideration. Like when I write Vampire Mob, I'm thinking about, well, where, where is this location while I'm writing it? And if I know that location, then I know where we're going to shoot it while I'm writing it. So that saves so much time in, in pre-production. It lowers my budget. We do, we do a lot of guerrilla shoots. We do a lot of no permit shoots. We have lookouts sometimes when we're shooting. Uh, it's not everybody's cup of tea, but I don't have a problem with it. And we've been very, very lucky and have shot like 125 pages just on this show without permits and never had a problem. But uh, so, so I think it's a combination of thinking of what story you want to, what story you really want to tell, what can you afford to tell or figure out a cheap way to tell, and starting from there, because once you, once you start thinking like that, then you need less people, then you need less, you know, you don't need a giant company to go, here's money. You know, you don't need to do a Kickstarter $50,000 campaign. Um, and it, Tra I think it trains your head as a because I write it, I direct it, I produce it, I edit it, uh, I fundraise for it, I promote it, um, I cast it. Uh, 
So if I'm doing all those things, and I know that I'm doing it without having to go, is this person okay for you? I'm gonna cast this person. Is that person okay? To a company, to a producer, to someone who's overseeing it. Focus on the freedom, focus on what you, the story you wanna tell, and the best way that you can tell it uh, would be my advice, and not everybody agrees with that. It's probably antithetical to marketing, to finding a sponsor, but if your story's really good and your audience knows, like the Vampire Mob audience knows how we make this show. They've seen us shoot the show. I talk on Twitter about making the show. I blog about it. So they know that we are just just a few people with cameras shooting in somebody's kitchen or stealing shots out in the street or whatever we're doing. Um, and that becomes the personality of the show. It becomes, for lack of a better term, the brand of the show. That we're like these indie people that are just like, fuck it, let's just go do this. And go do it.